the Ultimate Tank build in collaboration with Aquamatic. All right. All right, so Glenn is gone. Left me with my brand new stand. I'm so happy, but we're going to jump right into the build. So come on, guys. I want to show you something. Okay, so here is the reef station by Aquamedic, and I'm really in love with this thing already. Not just saying that, um, but I still have to try it out. So it is a perfect fit for my filtration room slash closet, but I did run into a dilemma. Let me show you guys. Now, the wheels do not come with this. I use it for filming, but it makes it really easy to move. Okay, as I said, this is a perfect fit. I even have room, once I move this all the way over, to be able to get to my plumbing. But I do have a dilemma, and I need to go get something so I can show you guys what that is. Here's my dilemma. Here is the Refugium by Aquamedic. It's a tall Refugium. I think it's pretty cool. I personally haven't seen one like this. But the problem is, now this refugium will fit perfectly under, you know, or in my stand, under my tank. But I, I wanted to have everything in here. So there might be a way I could, I'm pretty sure you can sit this on the floor and it will still work right. But I wanted to build a stand above the sump, about this high. And I was going to sit, which I thought was... A rectangular refugium on top of that stand. Now there's two other reasons why my initial thoughts probably won't work. Seth from uh, the Atlanta Reef Club who won the heavyweight division of Tank Wars was here and um, we were talking about uh, plumbing and as you guys probably know when you have an aquarium sometimes uh, after you build it you find out that you don't have as much space in certain places that you really need access to. So if I built the stand here, the legs, I would have to put legs on front of it. I could drill into the studs. The studs are, have two studs right here, and I could theoretically build the stand into the studs, but to be a little bit more safe, I wanted it to at least have front legs, and then the back of the shelf I would drill into the studs. Uh, that are along that back wall but the problem is the legs would then get in my way and I wouldn't be able to access my plumbing now maybe I won't need to get to my plumbing but as Seth said you probably always want well, you, if you can have extra room you should take it so uh, that's my other dilemma and why this won't work out So he was just here, Seth, and he gave me a suggestion that, and, and, and I'm going to bring you guys with me really quick. That's why it's always good to have someone help you out when you're doing a build, um, just so you can get some uh, additional thoughts. Seth's great idea was these stairs. <laughs> so what do I mean by these stairs? Well, he thinks... Because these stairs are right next to the closet, and you have this landing right there, that theoretically, there might not be anything but hollow space under those stairs. So what does that mean? That means... What am I doing? That means... No, still not right. That means... We're about to go through this wall. Okay, guys, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about knocking down this wall. But first, we have to think about safety. Now, I have learned firsthand about safety because my wife and I remodeled our kitchen and most of our house all by ourselves. Okay, so the first thing we want to think about because we're really not sure what's behind that wall is mask. Now, 
This mask may cut it if you are getting up light dust, but, and hopefully we don't have to worry about this, but there may be asbestos behind this wall. I, I really don't know because it's been closed for years. So I'm gonna go with this one. It's a little uncomfortable. Um, after I get back there and see that there's no, you know, black mold or asbestos, then I may switch to the other mask. The next thing we need to consider is eye protection. When you start hitting the wall, you want to make sure that your eyes are intact. So we can go with this one, or we can go with this one. Most of the time, you always want to wear gloves, some thick, heavy-duty gloves, because there may be nails back there that I can't see, are really uh, great. Last, but definitely not least, stud protector. We definitely want to be able to check and see what's behind these walls. I do have two stud protectors. I will not be using this one. I'll be using this one right here. The reason why is because not only is this a stud protector, it will also tell me if there's electrical wires behind that particular part of the wall. So what you would do is that you'll put this on the wall, hold it, it'll tell you when it's a stud, So we have a beam right here, but no electricity. Oh, no, it's actually giving us electricity sign when I moved it a little bit closer. So there's electric right here. Let's keep going. That nail's in our way. Okay, so it seems that there is a stud or a beam right here and there may be some sort of electricity so that's why you really want to be careful you don't want to just go smashing through walls let's see how my dogs like this new outfit Hi boys, come here, come here, hi, hey, how you doing boys, I don't think they like it much, okay, we're through there, Finally got through. My dog doesn't seem happy about the noise. But uh, I'm gonna make the hole a little bit bigger and try to get in there with my cell phone and see what we can see in there. But I can see there is something right here. It's a big stud right here. I'm not sure why my stud finder doesn't look like wood there. Okay, so there's something right here. I'm not really sure what that is, but let's keep going. All right, let's get the cell phone and look in there. All right. All right, you guys ready? Hopefully there's no people living in the wall. Wow, look at all that space. I hit the jackpot. Jackpot. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's keep going. Get some more light for me. Sorry, I know it's a little bright.
Okay. You see what I mean about the nails? As soon as you get in, if you're going in with the hands and pulling, there's nails right here. And those nails can have rust on them or anything. You get scraped on them, you get an infection. So you want to be really careful. Now there is a beam right here. Now this thing is... Okay, it's finding it now. I guess I went a little bit too fast with it. I can make mistakes too. But, um, let's keep going. I know this is not the fastest video, but I like to go nice and uh, slow when I'm doing this. I could cut it up, but I, I kind of want you guys uh, along for the journey with me. So I, I could just cut to when I'm done, but I'm going to keep you guys here the whole time if you don't mind. Man, it's clean back there. Well, it's a little bit dirty now because I made it dirty, but it's pretty clean back there. All right. Doesn't seem like anything leaked back there, so I don't see any mold or anything, but let's still keep this on to be safe. Excited. Yeah, I'm gonna show you guys. Let's give you, show you guys what we found. This is awesome. That <laughs> have space. And what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to make this. So when we sell the house eventually, because this is definitely not our last house, I'm gonna make this into a storage space. So I'm gonna drywall it up and uh, make it so it's like another room and I think it will add value to the house. People will love that. But for now, this is all going to be for my equipment room. All right, guys, let's keep breaking this up and then we'll go inside. I know this is a different video for me, right? This build has a uh, I really like it because I I'm not sure how the videos will do, but I really like it because it's showing you guys a different side of me. I really don't give advice in videos, but I mean, I do have some advice. I'm not an expert, but uh, I have done. This is going to be my eighth uh, salt water tank, and I've had 11 tanks total. So the other tanks were fresh water tanks. I don't, I don't think I need the mask, but we'll just stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Oh, so we have something right here. Okay. Okay. Good. Do you see it? Um, let's see. Okay. So this is this is as high as we can go so I do not think this is load bearing I know most of my load sorry guys I can't see my face most of my load comes here and over here so I think I'll be safe to remove this beam right here and I'll probably just cut it out right there um, I'll see what this one is right here I, I doubt this one is low barren either, but if it is, what I can do, I'll add another one closer in, and then I'll just remove this so I'll have some nice room to go in and out. But, um, here, here, let me show you guys 
what it looks like inside. All right, there we go. So I'm probably going to drywall this whole thing out. I thought it was going to be scary in here, but it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty excited. So my, let's see what's over here. I haven't even seen over there. You guys seen that before me? It's over there. All right. See some cobwebs, but nothing we can't handle. That's some spider webs right there. But I am excited, guys. All right, so I think I'm going to cut here. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on this. And um, I may bring you guys back when I cut these out, when I go in there and see, you know, if this is holding this, uh, supporting this right here. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll be back soon. Okay, ironically, we have a lot going on today. Um, for those of you that follow me on Facebook, you've seen I posted a picture that Aquamedic said that they were going to send me something, um, a surprise gift. And a lot of you tried to guess what it is. I had no idea what it is, but it feels pretty light. I'm really not sure, but let's dive into, into this and take a look. Normally, I would have two camera angles, but... I'm in the middle of knocking down that wall, so we're just going to go straight, straight up, no scissors, and open this. Now, I had said maybe a scraper, so we'll see if I'm right. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is, a scraper. That was my guess, only because I've seen the weight, and I said two pounds had to be a scraper. There you guys go. Scraper by Aquamedic. Let's see what else is in here. On the, gave me a few extra scraper blades. This is the pole for it. Pretty long. Is that it? I think that is it. I'm making a mess. Yep, that is it in here. Well, I have a new scraper. Thank you, Aquamedic. All right, guys, let's uh, get back to this build. Now, I didn't think I needed to do an unboxing for this, but midway through, I was like, ah, you know what? <laughs> let, me, let me go get my camera. So basically what this box is, is when I purchased um, this tank from Living Reef Orlando, they did not have um, the housing or the top for um, this tank and so they sent it to me and um, very nicely packed great job living reef Orlando and um, I, I'm about to run to Home Depot or Lowe's or both so I can start getting picking up plumbing and things I need for this build so I just wanted to see what was in here um, before I ran out I may have to build this whole thing from scratch I know, I should just get some scissors. Alright, so I think this is just the top. I was hoping that it would come with the, at least the, the plumbing that in here. I think that's one and a half inch. Alright, yeah, so it's just the top. It goes like that. And it has Reef Savvy on it. Oh well. Alright, so I'm going to have to do some measuring and figure out. I might keep this when I ship something else. But I'm going to have to do some measuring and figure out 
What's the size of all this plumbing? All right, so today may be the day of dilemmas. The next dilemma I have is that when I asked um, Glenn to build the tank, I forgot to tell him what type of overflow I had, and he thought I had the ghost overflow. I had the hybrid overflow. So what that means is the overflow needs to be cut over here. And where it comes to in the tank, I'll be cutting right through this beautiful molding right here. So I just got the phone with Glenn. So one of the options he gave me is that he could buy, build a box about this high. He would make the cut in it. He would make it really nice so it looks like the stand. And then um, all I would have to do is cut a little bit in here and we can start curving over. So that's a really good solution. The only problem is I really didn't want the tank that high. That's why I asked it for it to be this height. So uh, I'm going to put the tank up here and kind of see, uh, make sure my measurements are right and uh, see if there's anything else I can do. But uh, I'm uh, thinking I may just have to cut into this trim for right now until I can think of something else. But I hate to mess up this beautiful stand. It's so, so nice looking. Um, but that's the things you got to deal with when you um doing a build. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Tank Build, in collaboration with Aquamedic.